Larry, you do realize now that we, this group of women you so heartlessly abused over such a long period of time, are now a force and you are nothing. The tables have turned, Larry. We are here. We have our voices, and we are not going anywhere. And now, Larry, it's your turn to listen to me. Well, the Raceman, six-time Olympic medalist, our national hero, even more so today. Wednesday, we addressed the details of our national shame, U.S. gymnastics. Yesterday, we talked about the enablers from Michigan State and the NCAA perspective. Many more layers, including the systemic sexism, which mirrors our national conversation, and the lack of regard for female athletes and the coverage of it all. U.S. gymnastics terminating its agreement with Caroli Ranch as a first step to fix things. Kate, they closed the ranch. Do they need to shutter it all and start all over again? USA Gymnastics can't be renovated. It needs to be raised. And I don't say that flippantly. I say that with an eye on the rearview mirror of the last 15 years in our sports world, going back to Colorado and then to Penn State and then to Baylor. In each of those cases, it was not about the fact that it happened there. It was about the fact that it could happen anywhere. That was the lesson we were supposed to be learning each one of those times, that there is a systemic issue in how our athletic departments and our athletic programs at the youth level and at the federation level are operating. I have stepped onto hundreds of college campuses over the last few years to talk to student athletes. And the thing that I hear on almost every single one of them is some form of keep it in the program and keep it in house. And that's what I mean about what we're not learning from each one of these events is that athletic departments and federations cannot operate in an insular manner where they are afraid of the outside voices and outside eyes who have a fresh perspective on what's going on in their world because that's how we operate right now in so many levels in athletics and we need to address, address this. Any athletic director, anybody who runs a youth sports program who hears the phrase, let's keep it in house and protect the program needs to say right there, raise their hand and say, that's not how we can think. Mm. That is not how we can think anymore in our sports world. Thank you for that, Kate. Sarah, how do you begin to tear down the house? Yeah, I think Kate's right. You do have to tear down the house. And that's not said with disregard for those employees there who have spent their life trying to help the dreams and passions of these young girls be realized. But unfortunately, just like the Me Too movement, the innocent people who may be dis, uh, you know, inconvenienced by this are far mm -hmm. less important than the larger movement towards understanding the ways that women have been subjugated, not believed, not heard for such a long time. And talking to sexual violence experts, predators actually seek out places like college campuses, the military, mm -hmm. churches. Mm -hmm. We uh, saw it in the Catholic those, Church, absolutely. Those institutions so. mm -hmm. are more want to protect their own bottom line, their own reputation, than the people within them. And as long as you strive to, to help those institutions by protecting them, you're actually further damaging them because by the time the truth comes out, they can no longer be trusted. And that's where USA Gymnastics is. You have to start over. You can't expect parents or kids to trust them. And when USA Today Indianapolis Star broke this story um, back in 2016, they were talking about 368 mostly girls abused over a period of 20 years. We've also come to know that there have been payments made in terms of hush money, $1.25 mm -hmm. million dollars to Miss Maroney. Um, this is a horrible, horrible situation that we have. It is systemic in every way. And when we think about how we have talked about and addressed the problems that have faced some of our college campuses and some of those college programs, we have to look at it the same way when it comes to USA Gymnastics. This was win at all costs personified. It never should have gotten this big, but this is what happens when you as a nation desire so, so much to win these medals. Right, guys, so you know, I got to cover uh, the gymnastic team in Athens. And when you get to know these athletes and you understand their stories, their dedication, their parents' dedication, the amount of money that they put in, the amount of training that they put in, it really is striking. And then they kind of go away until the next Olympics. You hear these stories, and it's so heartbreaking. And to me, you know, uh, the Federation, the USOC, this really falls on them. You know, the Caroli Ranch, it sounds as creepy as the Neverland Ranch with everything that was going on there. And this, as Kate was talking about, you got to bring this down to the ground and start all over again. This is on as much the Federation and the USOC. Kate, you've been writing and addressing how part of this is the lack of regard for female athletes in general. Can you expound on that? Yeah. 
we often talk about the lack of spotlight on female athletes, and I think people don't realize that a spotlight can serve many functions. One is certainly to highlight the great performances of athletes, but another is to shine a light on the negative aspects that could exist within a sport or within a program. We've seen that numerous times throughout the years in certain men's sports. A reporter who's on a beat, you know, spotting steroids in Mark McGuire's locker. These are the reasons that media exists as well, mm -hmm. is to be vigilants and watchdogs to understand what's happening in a sport. And when you look at female athletes, they don't exist. What happens when there's an assault lawsuit filed in this a couple years ago if it's a high-profile sport? The media coverage at that point tries to address it. And in this case with USA Gymnastics, it failed. But it's not just true about criminal injustice. It's also the women's soccer team not getting the, the payment, not getting right. uh, the, the monies that the men's team does. And that's the best team in the entire world, the women's team. The men's team doesn't even qualify for the World Cup. Spain, last word. Yeah, to, to Kate's point, Allie Raisman in her testimony pointed out that while USA Gymnastics was announcing that they would no longer be holding facilities at Bella Caroli Ranch, there were girls practicing there yep. at that mm. exact moment. Do you think that would have been happening if there were media there, if there were watchdogs, if there the were coverage, people on the coverage, the race? lack of regard for female athletes, it's, it's mirroring, as we said, the national discussion on systemic sexism. And this is Me Too, this is, this is everything we've been taught. And I said this yesterday, predators live in silence Good people, they shy away from uncomfortable conversations. They hope someone else will have them. Injustice lives in silence, too. So I want to say this. The ends of silence doesn't just have to be your own voice. It can also be listening and amplifying the voices of others, the voices of the vulnerable. That force that Ali Raisman was talking about in the clip we started this segment today. What a way to put it, that force. Those are the voices we need to amplify. So men, time's up doesn't just mean you get to call out everything you see. It also means you can shut up and listen and give the microphone to voices that are that force.